Well, Paul, just as we're standing here in, the, in this <laughs> computer history museum, no one, no one would say that all of this amazing technology just simply arose as a result of physical processes. We, we wouldn't do that. Right. We, we know that an intelligent being, we saw the pictures of all of those <laughs> amazing people who each added their own intelligence to, as a part of this process, and yet, what we're dealing with is a paradigm that is not willing to accept that. It's exactly. a funny thing about the use of intelligence and explanation. It would be profoundly irrational to say that these devices self-assembled. In fact, no one would say that because it's simply not true. But when we come to things like the origin of life, the origin of the first cell, the origin of humankind, there, the agent in question, the intelligence in question, wouldn't be a member of our species Homo sapiens. So suddenly the temperature in the room goes way up mm -hmm. because the implications for saying the first cell was caused by a mind suddenly involve things that look a lot like theology and it becomes a much more difficult question for people to evaluate objectively, which is why these questions of origins, as I said a moment ago, aren't really simply scientific questions. They spill over at every point into theology, into philosophy, into these deep questions of who am I, why am I here, where am I going? So I think in many cases for scientists, they function with a split personality. They would say, yeah, a mini computer had to have a designer. Yeah. I ask, how about a eukaryotic cell? Vastly more sophisticated in its engineering, if you will than any of the devices we've looked at. Now, that hypothesis of design that was rational for the mini computer suddenly becomes problematic. Not because of the evidence, but because of what it entails, what it implies about the universe.